And hello, Facebook. Prophet David Taylor here with your weekly live prophetic word. Uh, thanks to all of you that are joining me live. Uh, remember, you will, I'll come on every Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Uh, PM Central Standard Time. And then I come on once a month on Thursday night, the second Thursday night of every month at 7 p.m. with a series called No More Genies, where we get rid of our genie concept of God and we look at what the word actually says. But today, on Sunday, I do my weekly live prophetic word. I ask the Holy Spirit, what word does he want me to release to the body of Christ? Okay, so let's pray, and we'll jump right in. Thank you, O oh God, for your presence. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your precious Holy Spirit, O oh God. I just surrender to the Holy Spirit, O oh God, so take over my mind, my words, my thoughts. Everything I say and do, O oh Lord, that the words you want spoken might be spoken, spoken, that you can release your word to your body, O oh God, and that we might receive everything you have to say to the honor and glory of your name, and that we might be edified, and that we might become more of who you want us to be. And I thank you for it, and I believe you for it right now, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I also feel led to say, remember that God does not require perfection, he requires growth. Yeah, one more time. God does not require perfection. He requires growth. What do I mean by that? I mean, be better this year than you were last year. Be better in 2019 than you were in 2018. That's what I mean. I mean, each year you live your life, are you growing spiritually? Are you growing mentally? What books are you reading? Are you growing emotionally? Do you have more mature emotions? Do you have more self-control? Are you growing physically? How is your diet and your exercise? Are you growing socially? Are you better in your relationships? Are you growing vocationally or professionally? Are you better at what you do? Are you growing financially? Can you make more money? Can you command a bigger salary? Do you know how to invest and create more wealth? Okay, because God does not re require perfection because God knows that we cannot offer up to him a sin-free life. So God does not require perfection. Now, you might have gotten that idea from some religious people, but that's not the Lord. God does not require perfection because we can't be without sin. Only Jesus Christ is without sin, but God does require growth, okay? So be better this year than you were last year. Be better this month than you were last month. Let your July be better than your June was, okay? So I just felt led to say that. I wanted to throw that in. Um, that's not the message for today. I just want to throw that out. So again, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time every Sunday and the second Thursday of every month, 7 o'clock p.m. You can also watch the replay on Facebook Live. You can watch it on my Twitter you can watch it on my Periscope, and you can watch it on YouTube, and all those links are on the Facebook Live page for those of you that want to watch the replay, okay? Today's prophetic word is a question, and here it is. Is your joy complete? Is your joy complete? And what do you mean by that? Well, I'm going to read our scripture reference, and then we're going to dive right into it, Okay. We're going to look at John, the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 10 and 11. Now, uh, the Gospel of John, that's the fourth book in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Okay, the Gospel of John was written by John the Apostle. John the Apostle was the one that put his head on Jesus' breast at the Last Supper. At the Last Supper. He was also the one that ran, with the, ran to the empty tomb with Peter. Uh, so Apostle John wrote the Gospel of John, he wrote 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and he also wrote the book of Revelation. That's all the same man, okay? He was also the one that Jesus trusted Mary to when he was dying. When Jesus was dying on the cross, there were some people at the foot of the cross standing there watching him die. Uh, one of those people uh, was his mom, Mary, and the other person was his best friend, John. And Jesus said, Son, behold thy mother, and mother, behold thy son. So in other words, uh, Jesus knew that even after he resurrected, he wasn't going to stay on earth. So he gave Mary to John as a mom and to take care of her and gave John to Mary as a son because the Lord knew he was leaving. Okay, so John, the apostle, was probably Jesus' best friend on earth. He was in a circle of three, Peter, James, and John. And Jesus trusted him with Mary, with his mom. Okay, that's who wrote the book of John, somebody who was that close to Jesus. Okay, so we're going to look at the Gospel of John, chapter, uh, chapter 15, and we're going to look at verses 10 and 11. 10 and 11. Okay, here we go. Uh, these first verses I'm reading are out of the Berean Study Bible. 
If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. Okay? So again, the prophetic word today was the question, is your joy complete? So looking at verse 11, when the Lord says, I have told you these things, what things? Verse 10, he said, if you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. Stop. That means that the love of Christ is expressed through his commandments to us. Now, sometimes it's, it's hard to see that picture with, you know, really stiff religious people, because really stiff religious people, they give you what I call fussology. They fuss at you. Okay, they use toxic shame, toxic guilt, toxic fear, and toxic anger to try to communicate the truths of the Bible. And that's just fuss out of They just fuss at you. Okay, talk about the stuff you're doing wrong. Talk about the stuff you should be doing. Maybe it's never enough. But that's not what the Lord said. <laughs> what the Lord said was, if you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. So in other words, when the Lord tells us to do something, that's his love for us expressed. Now, let me hasten to say here, this is why all those people that say, because God loves me, I can do whatever I want. All that is garbage based on John 15, 10. He said, if you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. Okay. So Jesus is telling us in no uncertain terms that when he gives us a command, when he tells us what to do, that's an expression of his love. And so he wants us to obey so we can stay in his love as we walk through life. That's different from the people that are trying to say, because God loves me unconditionally, I can just live any kind of way I want to. That's not what the Lord said. I can live any kind of way I want to and get blessed anyway. That ain't what the Lord said. The Lord said that his love is expressed in his commandments. And if you want to remain in his love, you have to keep his commandments, which is what I tell you every week. If you want to get what God wants you to have in life, you have to HBO. You have to hear, believe, and obey. That's the only way to get what God wants you to have in this life. You have to hear, believe, and obey. You can't just hear the word and reject it. I actually talked about that on my last Number no Genies broadcast. And you can't be disobedient and just do what you want and then get the full blessing of God. Okay? So do not listen to people that tell you that because God is love and he loves you, that you can just do whatever you want. That's not what the Lord says. And don't listen to people that just fuss at you and, you know, try to make you feel bad about everything or make you feel like you're not doing anything right. That's not what the Lord said. What the Lord said, if you keep my commandments, when I tell you to do something, you will remain in my love. And then he says, just as I have kept my father's commandments and remain in his love. That is so deep. What the Lord just told you was the Lord just gave you his secret weapon. The secret to Jesus' success in terms of his life on earth was the fact that he knew that God the Father loved him and he knew that God the Father's plan was the highest plan for him. So he said, I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. So in other words, the Lord is saying there's no conflict between God's love and God's commandments. There's no conflict between God's love and God's authority. Whenever God tells you something to do, that is his love being expressed to you by telling you do this or don't do that. That's his love, his commandments. And the Lord said that was his secret weapon on earth. That's why Jesus succeeded, because he never deviated from what the Father said. He did what the Father said because he knew that the Father loved him and that the Father's commandments were an expression of that love. Okay? So I have told you these things. Those are the things that the Lord is talking about. He's given you all the secrets. He said, I've told you these things so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. That word joy there coming out of the Greek is kara, or chara, okay? And it means joy, gladness, a source of joy, okay? It also can mean uh, from the, the cognate word it comes from, it means favor, be favorably disposed, properly the awareness of God's grace, favor, and joy. So in other words, the Lord just said, I want my favor. I want the awareness of my grace. I want my favor and joy, grace recognized. I want 
gladness to be in you. And the Lord says, I want my joy to be in you. But then he says that your joy, that your joy might be complete. Okay. Now the key word in this sentence is the word complete. Let's look up that word in the Greek. In the Greek, that word is pleuroo, pleuroo, okay? And what that word means is to make full, to complete, uh, fill, fulfill, complete. It also means to cram. It means to fill to individual capacity, okay? And so, in other words, what the Lord is saying is, I want you to be full of joy. I want you to be full to your capacity, that your joy might be full or complete. So what does that mean? That means uh, that, you know, Oprah didn't coin the phrase living your best life. Actually, Jesus coined that phrase. The, the Lord is saying is that the fullness of the life that God has for you, he wants it to fill you with so much joy. And where you find that is the deep down, very deep desires of your heart. What have you always wanted? Because that is Psalm 37 and 4, lest you think I'm making that up. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Psalm 37 and 4. So what is the deepest, deepest desire of your heart? I've heard people say, well, whatever God wants for me or I just want to love the Lord, that's great. But you want something. And many times we're afraid to say that, especially as Christians, because maybe we've been taught by religious people that have fussed at you that it's wrong to have desire. God said to seek him first not seek him only. God said to put him first and then he gives us richly all things to be to enjoy. He said in Matthew 6.33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then he said, and all these things <laughs> shall be added unto you. That means as a Christian, it's not, wrong, it's, it's not wrong to want things. So what is it that you want the most down in your heart? What is your dream relationship? If you can imagine the perfect person for you, what would that look like? What is your dream financial level? How much money do you want to have coming in every year so that you can do what's it, what it's in your heart to do? So you can live the way you want to live. What's your dream house or your dream home or your dream apartment or your dream condo? Where do you want to live? What is your dream education or degree? Did you go to school for what you wanted to go to school for? Or is that still yet to come? What is your dream? What is the deepest thing? Now, to understand what I'm talking about, this morning in worship, I started thinking about exactly what I'm telling you. And the Holy Spirit, I discovered the Holy Spirit was bringing some things to my mind. And I, and I almost went into the ugly cry, man. I felt a wall of tears coming because he tapped into some desires that were so deep in my heart. And it's things I haven't really done yet like I wanted to. And, and it was reminding me that way down deep inside what I really want was the things I was thinking about. And I just almost started bawling because it touched my heart so deeply because the Holy Spirit was trying to show me that he wanted, wants my joy to be complete. I'm supposed to be living in that dream I have in my heart. That's my point. And so it's not just that way for me. It's that way for everybody, okay? So do you have that deep soul satisfaction? When you wake up every day and you look around at the details of your life, is the life you're living the one you wanted to live or, you know, and or when you've tapped into God's better plan, when you've gotten into the will of God? Are you deeply satisfied? Because you're not going to stay with it unless you have that joy. The Lord said he wants your joy to be complete, full, crammed full of joy, filled to capacity. OK, is that the way you feel every day when you wake up? Do you feel full of joy? Do you wake up raring to go? Do you wake up feeling like, I can't wait to get to this day? Because you're so excited. You know, like, does, you know, do, do your evenings feel like Christmas Eve? That kind of thing. That kind of deep-seated joy, okay? And I'm sad to say, we don't always see that in the lives of believers. Sometimes what we see is kind of that, that pseudo-joy. Sometimes what we kind of see is that church joy, meaning you come to church and shout but you don't necessarily have victory in your life. And this morning, our worship leader was talking about victory, and then a prophetic word came forth, and she said, the prophetess that spoke and said, there's two words, you win. You win, you get the victory. So uh, so that's the word, prophetic word for today, and that's the challenge for today, is your joy complete? But I mean down to small details, small details. 
do you drive what you want to drive? Do you wear what you want to wear? You know, your diet, the small details of your life. Do you know, do you have joy from them? That kind of thing. Okay? So the Lord said, I've told you these things. What things? That his commandments are an expression of his love. And the Lord said that I'm also giving you my secret weapon. I stayed in the Father's commandments. I did everything the Father told me to do because I knew that was an expression of his love. So again, don't listen to those people that tell you that because God loves you, you can just do whatever you want. That's not what the scripture says. What the scripture says is that the Lord's love is expressed in his commandments. But then he goes on to say, I've told you those things so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be full or complete or crammed or filled to capacity. That means way down inside, those desires you have way down inside. That's the dream God wants you to live. That's the dream God wants you to be walking in. That's why King David rejoiced so much. In the Bible, King David used to praise God till he started leaping and dancing. And a couple of times he came out of his clothes. He just praised God so hard because he was so happy that he went from being a shepherd boy in Jesse's house that nobody knew to the king of Israel. God plucked him from obscurity and took him from being a shepherd boy that, that nobody knew anything about to being not only king over Israel, but the greatest king of Israel, except, of course, for Jesus Christ himself. But even Jesus was known and called the son of David. What an honor for David to be honored by God in that way. And David had so much joy in his heart and his life. He realized God had blessed him so much from where he was to become a king until he praised God without restriction. He was uninhibited. He said, I don't care what I look like. I don't care how much y'all talk about me. I, I don't care how vile or base I look. I have to thank God because he took me from being a shepherd boy to a king. Can you see that? So do you have that kind of King David joy where you look at what God has brought your life? I'm not talking about that phony church smile that in praise the Lord. Not that one. I'm talking about when you look around and you're so filled with joy, you're so overwhelmed, you're so overcome with happiness until you don't know what to do, until you're just bawling, until you're just speechless. Because this thing, this life that you're living, these things you're experiencing are stuff that you always wanted from a child. Is that the life you're living? So the Lord said, if we keep his commandments, we're going to remain in his love. And he told us that so that his joy would stay in us and that our joy might be full. And I think that's a good word, so I praise God for it. Is your joy complete? And the last thing I'll say, and then I'm going to go to the next section is, the last thing I'll say is, this is why so many people don't want to believe in Jesus and don't want to become Christians because they don't see enough joy in us. So in other words, if the God you're serving can't make you full of joy, if he can't make you happy, if your life isn't what it needs to be, why should I believe in it? Why should I convert to Christianity? Which, you know, they do have a point. If we're not full of joy, and again, I'm not talking about that fake church joy, it all praise God, not that one. I'm talking about the real joy that comes from living your dream. If we're not doing that, then why would people want to believe in our God? So, amen and amen. All right, if you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen. And remember, if I don't pray for them live here, it's only because I didn't see them. Because I can't see everything that pops up on the screen, uh, Facebook Limits. Uh, some of what I can see in terms of the comments. So if you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen now. And if not, if you have a prayer request and I don't pray for it live, I will pray for it uh, when the broadcast is over because I'll go back and look through the comments in case I missed anything. Okay, not seeing anything right now. Now, when you see me close my eyes and speak in tongues, I'm going in the Spirit and asking the Holy Ghost, is there a need for physical healing? Is there a need for deliverance? Do we need anything unclean cast out? Is there a need for a financial word? And are there any prophetic words he wants me to release? So when you see me close my eyes and speak in tongues in this part of the program, that's what I'm doing. Okay, the Holy Ghost is telling me that somebody's left foot is bothering them. Okay? Reach your hand down and put it on top of your foot or bring your foot up to where you can put your hand on it. Okay? Put your left hand on your left foot and say, in the name of Jesus, I command my foot to be whole. By his stripes I am healed and I command wholeness and health and healing to every part of my foot. My skin, my circulatory system, my toes, my toenails, my ankles, my bones, 
my ligaments. I command my foot to be every whit whole right now in Jesus' name. Okay, somebody out there might be having brain problems. If you're having brain problems, take your right hand and put it on your forehead and say, in the name of Jesus, I command my brain to work 100% correctly. I command my brain to be whole. I command wholeness in my brain. Every part of my brain, I command it to be 100% whole right now with no more delay. And we cast out cancer. We cast out aneurysms. We cast out stroke. And we speak health, wholeness, and healing to your brain right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, the Lord's giving me a word about financial prosperity, and the Lord is saying to have no fear. So I don't know who that's for, but the Lord is saying to have no fear when it comes to your money. The Lord is saying that he will lead you and he will guide you. Okay? So that's a word of comfort and assurance for someone to financially, wherever you are, Jesus is saying, have no fear. Okay, God's going to lead you. God's going to guide you. He's going to take care of you. All right, I think that's it. So our challenge this week is to examine our hearts and examine our lives and find out, are we living our dream? Are we living that deep down, that deep-seated joy, that thing that you've been dreaming about since you were a child, are you living that? Are you living that life? Are you living that joy? Or are you just living kind of a surface life? Because you've just living a surface life, your joy is not complete or full. It's just kind of shallow. And when your joy is shallow like that, it's also easily taken away. But when you have that joy that's rooted in the deep desire of your heart that God put down in there, nobody can take that joy from you. Okay? So God bless you. So uh, remember to watch this video from the top of the program so you can get... Uh, all of the teaching and all of the prophetic words. I'm on every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, Facebook Live, Twitter, Periscope, and, um, amen, uh, Twitter, Periscope, and then I post a video on YouTube, and I'm on the second Thursday of every month, 7 o'clock p.m., doing a series called No More Genies. I'm also working on some books, some prophetic ministry books, so I do have some things I'm developing, uh, and so uh, normally I do a book launch. I'm going to make an announcement on my broadcast first to let you know when I actually have my prophetic books available because I'm working on getting them finished up, but I definitely have some stuff uh, in the pipe. So I will let you know. So God bless you and thank you. And remember, this week, examine your life and examine your heart and ask yourself, is my joy complete? God bless. <laughs>